Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you please rise. It gives me great pleasure to present to you the Fuqua School of Business Cross-Continent Class of 2017, the Weekend Executive Class of 2017, and the Global Executive Class of 2017.
Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Every year, I'm slightly panicked that our students will not pass their final logistics exam in terms of being able to find their seats, but congratulations. I'm Bill Bolding. It's my extraordinary privilege to be the dean of the Fuqua School of Business. And it's an extraordinary privilege because every day at the Fuqua School is an amazing day, but today, is beyond, uh, beyond amazing. It is a just fabulous day where we get to celebrate the accomplishments of these students in front of me here. So congratulations, and you'll hear that many times today. But even though it is your day, and it's the culmination and beginning simultaneously of your life's journey, there are many people who got you here. And so I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes thanking some people in terms of their role in making this day possible. First, I'd like to thank all the friends and family that are here with us today. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the ones who could not be here, who are in a critical part of your success in reaching this achievement. But there's no question that all of you had to rely on a network of, of people to make this individual accomplishment possible. And we are deeply grateful to all of you to make this moment possible. Second, I'd like to acknowledge the faculty who poured their hearts and soul into making sure that you're able to maximize your experience, knowing that for each of you, this was a life-altering choice, a choice that many times probably led you to say, why did I do such a crazy thing? Why did I turn my life upside down? And our faculty were there to make sure that you receive full measure from that investment, that commitment, that crazy commitment that all of you made. The third group are the staff who are there every step of the way in helping your journey and making sure that the experience was one that was warm, welcoming, and helpful. And so I'm very grateful to the staff that's made this day possible. And finally, I'd like to recognize the student representatives from the various classes in terms of the roles that they played in terms of coordinating class activities, representing the class to faculty and staff, providing class leadership, and generally being all around wonderful people. And so if I could ask those class representatives to please rise and, and let us acknowledge you. Thank you. So now we're going to get on with the show here and uh, to, to facilitate the next part of the program, I'm going to turn things over to Mohan Venkatachalam, the Senior Associate Dean for all of your programs. I'd also like to note uh, that the Senior Associate Dean that all of you came in with, John Gallagher, is not here today in, in physical presence, but he's certainly here in spirit since he launched you all on this journey. But Mohan is here to close things out for you. Mohan? Thank you, Bill. Um, it's a glorious day indeed, and I'm delighted to be part of this wonderful ceremony. The cross-continent weekend executive and the global executive classes have spent many, many hours under the guidance of the Fuqua faculty. And so now, to begin our celebration, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Kate Eugenia Zabinski, who will make the presentation of the Excellence in Teaching Awards on behalf of the cross-continent class of 2017. Okay, oh, 
First off, I'm going to point out the irony that the girl who, before this program, didn't know how to use Excel except for grocery list, is up here presenting an award to her managerial accounting and corporate finance professors. Seriously, ask some of my teammates. Shane DeColey and John Graham exude an excitement for their respective subjects that can apparently teach anyone how to use the sum function. Seriously, though, there is an unwavering gratitude among our class for how respectful they were of the environment and constraints under which we were operating. Residencies are brutal. I doubt there's anyone here who doesn't know that. They never let us off the hook, but they allocated, accounting word, uh, work accordingly between residency and distance, giving us just much, enough to push us, but not so much that we had to sacrifice the irreplaceable opportunities that come only from spending time with our peers outside the classroom. As evidenced by me graduating, they didn't just teach those of us whose industry and function their course directly applied to. They taught all of us. Shane DeColey, managerial accounting. It's a mouthful. It's not the most approachable subject when first conjured in the mind. Yet, it is one of the most important when it comes to understanding how a company functions and turns a profit. Let's be honest, we're MBAs. We only care about profit, right? So how did Shane break down a seemingly impenetrable wall of numbers that has nary a set rule or regulation? He walked into class one day dressed exactly like the teddy bear he was holding. I mean, like down to the color and the knot of the tie. He created an entire simulation of the pitfalls of incorrect cost accounting at a teddy bear company. He took a case study off the page, in inducing us to use the numbers to create and argue our positions and possibly pass some blame to our classmates. In a very practical way, we lost, locked an understanding of how numbers can detect problems within an institution and help innovate solutions. In addition to using a teddy bear to suggest not firing the CEO in the middle of a company-wide meeting, he showed genuine interest in us as people. He had breakfast with us every day in Germany, even before we had coffee. Despite our stupor, he persevered. He was just as excited about our personal goals as he was about transfer pricing. His insightful questions and ability to remember details about all 100 of us did not go unnoticed. Duke is going to miss you, but we know you will continue your passion for your students wherever you are. On behalf of our class, we feel so fortunate to have had you as a teacher. Thank you. All right, John Graham. So 10 days before we arrive in Durham, we get a textbook that he wrote. Then we get to campus, and we get handled a pack of slides. I don't know how many there were. I gave up counting halfway to 1,000. It's a little intimidated. But then from the moment we arrived in his classroom, any lingering nerves we had about signing up for this class disappeared as he made himself relatable to us as a person and then did the same with the material. We learned real-world policy consequences, both historical and current. He had a not-so-subtle hint in the form of a case study to save for retirement. And of course, none of us will ever forget our shoes before we present to Treasury. Sorry, that one's an inside joke. All right. It wasn't just the neophytes like me who thought his instruction was eye-opening. The friend I sat next to in class has some very good genius-level experience with finance. His Excel sheets could probably be in the Smithsonian. Anyway, this friend would start poking me while I was trying to leverage and unleverage all sorts of things. He'd start whispering and writing notes in the margins of my slides. Don't worry, I promise, all passing of notes was 100% academic. My friend during corporate finance was like a fangirl backstage with the Beatles because he swears Professor Graham's connections and insights were the first he'd ever heard that connected all aspects of the financial world in an overarching way. We learn the why of the methods rather than just where to plug in the numbers. There is no doubt you deserve this award. So on behalf of the CC MBA class of 2017, thank you.
Uh, thank you very much to Kate for those very kind words. I I'm really grateful uh, to the faculty and the staff for the standards they set in the CCMBA program. They were so high, I I've always felt like I was trying to keep up with, uh, with those standards. Um, I also want to uh, pay special tribute to all of your loved ones that have brought you here today and uh, that sacrificed a lot. I can't imagine what that was like, but uh, congratulations to them on, on getting you to, to, to this uh, spot. And finally, congratulations to the class. I was inspired and in awe of the dedication to learning and also the resilience that you had throughout your MBA program, certainly throughout the class that, that I taught. Uh, I found that every time you came to class, you had heart, you had hope, and you had uh, a, a vision for the future of where you wanted to be. And it was uh, an experience that I'll never forget, the only CC class that, that I've ever taught here, and it was the best class that I've ever taught here. Thank you very much. I don't have a cool accent like Shane, but I'll do my best. All right, I brought my seating chart one last time to mark where you guys are in attendance. But. Joking aside, it's, it's really a great honor um, to be chosen for this award. It's an honor because there are a lot of good teachers uh, in your program, and uh, when I looked down the list, I was very surprised and humbled to be chosen, so thank you for that. It was also an honor to get to know you and uh, spend time with you and get to know your curious minds. Um, so thank you very much for this award. It was one sentence piece of advice. Uh, life is, goes by fast, very fast. So. Figure out how you can, you individually can make the world a better place, whether that's in your professional life or in your personal life. And then keep your eye on that target and go do it. Congratulations, everyone. Now I would like to introduce Brian John Weatherford, who will make the presentation of the Excellence in Teaching Awards on behalf of the Weekend Executive Class of 2017. Good morning. As a father of three, I am forever amazed at my children's insatiable desire to learn. Curious by nature and hungry for answers, our house is constantly bellowing, why this, why that, and why not? In many ways, your typical executive MBA student is no different. Inquisitive by design, continually questioning the status quo, <clears throat> and purposely defiant to engage in constructive conversation. Every good student knows that learning requires more than just curiosity. The prodigious student needs to excel with an excel, <clears throat> sorry, exceptional teacher. In my very first day of term three, I walked into my first class at the new J.B. Duke, and before I could get my bearings, a professor saw my face, read my name tag, and recalled absolutely everything that I had written in my Fuqua profile. And I'm not that special. He had spent the time to commit all 96 profiles from our class to memory. Our families, our education, our quirks, and our adventures, he knew everything. Even more impressive than this dedication was his unparalleled patience. Every day, every class, every assignment, he gave each student his undivided attention to, rev to review our Excel disasters, crawl through our individual thought processes, and help us find our own mistakes. He never let us give up. The result of his persistence was nothing short of a miracle and we cannot thank him enough as every student walked away from his class changed, more confident in our work and more thoughtful of every person around us. It is my esteemed honor to present the Weekend Executive Class of 2017's Excellence in Teaching Award to our Excel Jedi and purveyor of decision models, Professor David Brown. And in the beginning, we were all filled with unbounded exuberance. 
eager to dive into the new case studies and share our own ideas and ideals with our shiny new iPads, Office Depot printed course packs that we had individually developed our own fancy custom cover sheets. You fast forward 16 months and we hit a two week elective term and it just thundered down on us. Energy was gone. Barely enough energy to download the course packs, let alone clean our own new, not so new iPads. We walked into our first elective class and a savior had come. Stacked on the first table, neatly printed, gleaming binders, color coded, organized tabs, and fancy cover sheets. It was glorious. The executive MBA class is really truly a remarkable group of people. We have CPAs, bankers, lawyers, engineers, doctors, consultants, a pastor, and a NASCAR driving car salesman. It takes an equally remarkable teacher to make such a huge long lasting impact on our lives. At every opportunity, this remarkable teacher made it his priority to engage every student, helping us discover our own strengths. Every day he showed that no matter your background, you had something to share and that everyone was a part of Team Fuqua. We want to thank you for preparing us for our careers with your finance insights. Thank you for preparing us for life with your passion of Team Fuqua. And thank you for preparing us for class with a fancy organized binder. Once again, it's my esteemed honor to present the Weekend Executive Class of 2017's Excellence in Teaching Award to our portal to the minds of CFOs around the world, Professor John Graham. Speak again. I can be very brief because you already heard what I had to say. Weekend students, I love you just as much as the CCMBA students. <laughs> I won't say just do it, given our speaker for later today. I'll say go do it, all right? <laughs> Thank you so much. It's wonderful to see all of you. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I do want to say something to all the loved ones and the, and the family members, friends here. Sorry about that 48-hour final exam last year that these guys slaved over. Sorry, that was, that was hard, I know. Um, but seriously, thank you so much. Um, I, I just want to thank you. Just, I have amazing colleagues here at Fuqua, um, just world-class teachers. And just to be recognized like this uh, means a great deal to me. Um, and it's extra special coming from you because I witnessed firsthand how much you put into this program and how much the sacrifices you made. And, and I just want to reiterate what I said the last class we had. Thank you for being such a wonderful group of people. Uh, I had a, you made my job very easy. I mean, you may, maybe sent me a thousand emails during the final exam collectively, but other than that, that was only because you cared. Um, and so thank you so much. I look forward to catching up with all of you later today. Um, congratulations. Thanks. John, if you don't have enough space in your office, let me know. I can pick some of those uh, goodies up back. Um, now, I would like to introduce Dong Han Son, who will make the presentation of the Excellence in Teaching Award on behalf of the Global Executive Class of 2017. Good morning. Today, I'm tremendous honor to present Faculty Teaching Award on behalf of Fuqua Gamba Class of 2017. First of all, I'd like to thank you all faculties and staffs for your admirable contribution to our Gamba experiences and lessons. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> when I reflect back on this professor, four things come to mind. Discipline, attention to detail, out of box thinking, passion for the class of GMI. We cannot forget the first class with Professor Catherine Schiffer. <laughs> Unlike other classes, all of us were already sitting in our seats before class started because we were well aware of her discipline. Her presence was felt even before the class. Her class were measured up to her reputation. Personally, 
as an international student, I had a very tough time with essay-like quizzes that lasted six hours long. Frankly, I got the lowest score on the first quiz in her GMI program. <laughs> I might drop the course without encouragement my team members, but it was her teaching and the team environment that ultimately rewarded me various lessons. If I don't mention her out of back thinking, I wouldn't be describing her teaching fully. She always requests diverse and alternative approaches with her team assignments. The required book for GMI of Why Nations Fail and Travelers of T-shirts expanded our horizon and helped us to break the mold of what we thought was normal. We were especially delighted with her commitment to our class. She paid attention to us throughout four terms. Impressed, fascinated, we asked for her an additional class in Shanghai so we could spend more time with ingenious professor. She is always passionate, insightful, and charming. So it is our honor to present Professor Catherine Schiffer with a Faculty Teaching Award for Gamba Class of 2017. Well, I almost did not recognize myself in that description. <laughs> Except for the, you better be in your seat before the class starts, please. Thank you so much for selecting me for this special honor. I'm sure that all of you know, I found our time together in the GMI course to be a splendid experience. A treasured opportunity <clears throat> to learn with and from an extraordinarily accomplished group. I've been teaching for more than four decades, and I can say without reservation that every year is better than the last. Congratulations, best wishes, may God bless you all. Now I'd like to present Marco Antonio Marquez Gomez from the weekend executive class of 2017, who will present Dean Bolding with a consolidated class gift uh, on behalf of all three cohorts. Good morning. One of the best parts of being the alumni liaison is I get to um, say what the cool part of the MBA is to give back. And the second part is that I have the biggest gift for everybody here. So, in, in, on behalf of the uh, cross-continent class of 2017, the Global Executive MBA Program of 2017, and the Weekend Executive Program of 2017, it's my honor and pleasure to present this gift to uh, Dean Bill Baldwin with all the, uh, your contributions. We, we collectively co uh, got $57,093 that goes to the FUQA Annual Biz uh, Fund. This fund is used to um, sponsor scholarships, uh, research, and other academic activities. So thank you again for your support. And Bill Gawain, please. Thank you so much for a really big check. Uh, I've, I've discovered those don't go very well if you do the drive-through. Uh, more importantly, it's not the size of the check that matters, it's the, it's the size of the commitment and the idea that even though you're just finishing your time as students, you're already committed to our future and your willingness to invest in that future and invest in those who will follow you and for that, I am deeply grateful. Thank you so much.
Thanks to all the classes for their tremendous financial contributions to the Fuqua School of Business. I would now like to introduce the class speaker for the Cross Continent class of 2017, Everett Paul Lozi. Good morning and hello to the literally millions watching the live stream on YouTube this morning. Congratulations, Cross Continent, MBA class of 2017. This class is a testament to Fuqua's commitment to diversity and global awareness. Our class represents 19 countries, is roughly 30% international, about 20% are minorities, and 35% women. With such an impressive pool and talent, I have no idea why I'm standing before you today. I'm probably the least talented and the least diverse person in this year's class. When I first found out about the cross-continent program, I was just a young, wide-eyed guy who graduated from the other North Carolina university eight miles down the road. <laughs> when my wife and I first came to Fuqua for an open house, I was nervous. My palms were sweaty, knees weak, arms were heavy. I was nervous, but on the surface, I looked calm and ready. We weren't really sure what to expect, but I remember how shocked we were with how nice and welcoming everyone was. Like, what is, is this is Duke? <laughs> so special shout out to the admissions team who gave me my first lesson, from Fuqua at least, in putting aside preconceived notions um, and immersing myself in new experiences with new people. When the first term rolled around and I met my new classmates, I witnessed firsthand the concept of Team Fuqua, which I'd previously thought was just a marketing gimmick. Today, I can confidently say that this class is the most supportive, challenging, and inspiring group of people that I've ever had the pleasure of being associated with. I'm so happy to have met most of you. Needless to say, the younger and handsomer version of me wouldn't believe where I'm standing right now. So a big thank you to the faculty, the program management, career management center, uh, administration, and my classmates. This experience turned out to be everything I'd hoped for and much more. With so much going on, what a fascinating time to be studying in a program that's intentionally getting out into the world and digging into cultural, political, and social aspects of modern business. Many of you, I'm sure, saw a few weeks ago when Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg explained how the internet works to our representatives in Washington. <laughs> 10 years ago, this guy Zuckerberg was an entrepreneur creating a hot or not website, and now we're expecting him to solve the issue of foreign election interference. Funnily enough, I think this is a perfect example of the way that business and social institutions are overlapping in ways and at a pace, especially, that we haven't had to previously grapple with. And so I'm so thankful for the discussions I witnessed and took part in inside and outside these classes. And I believe we're all now better prepared to take on the business environment that we're going to face over the course of our careers. On a personal level, too, what an exciting and interesting time to collide in life. In the past two years, I've lost a job, gained a job, and gotten married. All one time. <laughs> I know many of you experienced many of these same things, and still others were engaged or had children or experienced a host of other major life events. I'm still amazed, particularly by those of you who like, literally created a person in the midst of this program. You may have noticed I actually gained a little weight, but for those of you who are wondering, I can assure you that was 100% a result of the snack bars during residency. Anyway, I'm in awe of everything in life that this group was able to balance. I'd like to take the opportunity, too, to thank all of those who supported us through this hectic 17-month adventure. For me, uh, I'd like to thank my parents and my siblings, and my wife, Keely, who was by my side for all those nights when I definitely did not cry. So to all the spouses, partners, children, parents, friends, family, colleagues, anyone else, your patience, encouragement, and understanding did not go unnoticed. We owe you big league. Thank you.
I'll finish by quoting a caption on a post I made to Instagram a few weeks ago. I had taken a flying lesson and was inspired to craft the following words of wisdom, which I will share with you today. There will be turbulence in life, but keep your eyes on the horizon because there are clear skies ahead. The captain has turned off the fastened seatbelt sign of your life. Next stop, endless possibilities. Congratulations, CrossCon and MBA 2017 and all the FUCO graduates here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Everett. Um, now I would like to introduce the class speaker for the weekend executive class of 2017, Natasha Regina Chavis. Good morning. Um, I'm beyond humbled to be representing the weekend executive class. Thank you all for this tremendous honor. Um, in reflecting on this journey, I found it ironic that at the end of two years, we get to call ourselves masters. I say this because I doubt there is one single graduate here today that would be willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with David Brown on decision-making or try to one-up Professor Graham's CFO survey. And I, for one, am far from bold enough to sit down to negotiation opposite Ashley Rosette. <laughs> My point is, I think it's fair to say what we actually have at this stage, pun intended, is one heck of a toolbox. What we do with it is up to us. As a class, we started this endeavor with the desire to develop. And now, thanks to Fuqua, we have arrived at our first accomplishment. And while it seemed like such a relief to click submit on that final, final exam, now the real work has begun. It is time to realize our potential and leave our marks on the world. In doing so, I'd like to suggest a three-factored approach. I learned to only have three from business school, of course. They are, be one of a kind, fear less, and then just crush it. By design, we are already one of a kind. We have unique DNA, sets of fingerprints, experiences, the list goes on. Yet being one of a kind often escapes us. Being clear about what you have to offer the world takes time and effort. Often, when people ask, to ask us to tell them more about ourselves, we start offering up labels. For example, one might choose to describe me as an engineer, but the reality is my brain is simply efficient in identifying outliers. From the outside looking in, one might be hasty and call me a parent, but the reality is this tiny individual has been the one molding me for the last four years. We have been conditioned by society to slot ourselves, to confine our limitless potential to narrow definitions. However, reaching the pinnacle of success is going to require that we know ourselves much better than that. What kind of human being are you? What moves you? As Mark Brown so eloquently stated in our first days together, what are you doing here? <laughs> I am a firm believer that the foundation to feeling fulfilled is becoming highly proficient in our own thought processes, values, and biases. Being clear about these things is not second nature. It requires an ongoing commitment to personal development. Yet even once we are clear about who we are, the immediate obstacle that follows will be fear. Fear because acknowledging your uniqueness is going to come at a price. There is comfort in the mold. But to truly bring your best self to the world, you must be willing to be ostracized and okay with being alone. There's nothing wrong with being alone, unless you not like who you're alone with, to which I'd say keep focusing on that first factor. Um, but to champion fear, you must go fearlessly in the direction of the unknown. In the last four years, I've had 14 physical addresses, 10 of which have been with a baby, and many of which in places I'd never been before. Everyone in this room is a product of the flat that explorers refuse to believe that the world was flat. The world, and business especially, needs more explorers. Nothing innovative has ever come from traditional ways of thinking. Fear less and be willing to go places you've never been before. And finally, just crush it. While it seems self-explanatory, it is not. In a fast-paced world, we've created the means to cut corners, selling others on perceived value while offering very little in return. 
What is your plan to enrich the life of others? It is not going to come as an epiphany someday while sipping pina coladas on a beach. Make a decision and then give it everything you've got. Everything you've got will bring you to tears some days. It will push you to your physical and emotional limits, make you question your own abilities, but it is what is required. If you've never unraveled, then you've never tried to win. Stop playing it safe. Never take no for an answer. Never let someone outside of yourself tell you what is or is not possible for your life. This is your life, but what you do with it is up to you. Thank you, Natasha. Um, now I would like to introduce the class speaker for the Global Executive uh, Class of 2017, James Murray. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I have the distinct displeasure of following a tremendous group of student speakers this morning. So um, they've basically said everything that I was going to say, so I'm going to wing it. Okay. okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, so, first of all, I wanted to uh, just reiterate um, what some of the, uh, the last folks have said. Um, we need to take a moment today to recognize uh, all the family, friends, confidants, and mentors uh, that are here today and that aren't here today celebrating with us, um, because without that support, uh, this, this just wouldn't have been possible. So thank you very much. So lead, leaders of consequence. Um, those three words motivated a personal journey for me, admittedly embarked upon with some trepidation, um, but it's been truly transformative. So I began this program as a career big company guy, right? Um, I now see the value, potential, and excitement in new ventures. I typecast myself as an aviation operator, but I'm now leading a re-startup in the specialty food manufacturing industry. I'm literally an off-the-charts introvert trying to figure out why on earth people decide to do this for a living. <clears throat> and I think the people closest to me will tell you that I've changed for the better over the last two years. So through that change, I've come to realize that the value of this program is not so much in its academic content, though that's second to none. But it's really in the people, the faculty, the program staff, students alike, with whom I've had uh, the privilege to interact, who have supported and inspired each other along their own journeys to simply be better. We are the faces of Fuqua, and we're guardians of the reputation that it keeps. So reputation is something with which we see many people struggle today. I mean, just turn on any news program. Sooner or later, you're going to hear about some person that's been revered up until this point in time, who's just discovered to have done something completely out of character, uh, inexcusable in polite society. But are these actions truly out of character? Uh, I'd argue not. Uh, each of these people appear to intentionally live two very different lives, one public, one private, and never the twain shall meet. Well, they were wrong. No one is safe from the consequences of their own actions, and no one should be, because your reputation will both precede and follow you. So a number of years ago, I was given a piece of advice by a good friend who happened to be my boss at the time, sitting up there, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> uh, upon being promoted into my first role as a leader of others. Uh, he told me, always be aware of what I said and how I acted, because people would now always be watching and would use my actions as a gauge for their own as they each aspire to bigger, bigger roles uh, within their own career paths. He said, you're on stage now all the time, and that actually rings true for everybody today. It's important for all of us to recognize that the data and technology advances that make our lives easier also come with a toll on privacy. We live in an era of unprecedented transparency and personal accountability. And it's now more critical than at any other point in our history to always portray ourselves in a manner befitting our character and our aspirations. The value that we derive from this degree and our association with Duke is determined by our own actions and the reputations that we earn for ourselves. The value that we deliver to Fuqua, fundraising aside, uh, is through our demonstrated accomplishments and the good that we bring to others, living as leaders of character and leaders of consequence. We do this by being true to ourselves, conducting ourselves with honor and integrity, being steadfast in our moral character, being compassionate towards others, being contemplative and purposeful in all of our actions, always challenging our own assumptions and what we believe to be truths, never being satisfied with the status quo, 
and not allowing people or circumstance to ever define who we are. Over the last two years, I've gotten to know each and every one of my classmates, and together we've shared some truly one-of-a-kind memories. In our first residency alone, while in New Delhi, we experienced Halloween, Diwali, and the Cubs winning the World Series. <clears throat> the following week, we learned the results of the U.S. presidential election in the middle of an econ class in Dubai. <laughs> and uh, in the spirit of transparency, we did discuss a little bit more than econ that day. Uh, truly unforgettable. But through all these experiences and opportunities for discord, uh, I was inspired by the refreshing candor and compassion with which we tackled all of these difficult issues. Listening and learning rather than proclaiming and judging. So today, I continue to be impressed with the character, humility, and determination that drives each of you to be true leaders in your respective fields and in your lives. Your passion is contagious. Your clarity of purpose is sharp. Your hearts are warm, and I would follow each of you any day. So on this stage today, I'm humbled to represent the amazingly accomplished, the capable, compassionate, and visionary 2017 Global Executive MBA cohort. So take note of this roster, because everybody is going to see these names again. Thank you. Many thanks to three wonderful student speeches there. Uh, absolutely ins inspirational. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker. And when, when I select a commencement speaker, I'm generally looking to meet some very, very important criteria. The first thing is that the person chosen really needs to be an individual who's achieved real success, has, has achieved amazing accomplishment in his or her life. Because we want someone who stands here and to have you look at that person and say, wow, that's something I could aspire to. That's a goal that maybe I could reach someday. And so you need, you need to have done something big, something important. Um, in addition to that, you hope that this person, in terms of reaching their accomplishments, has developed real wisdom and insight. Because they're going to be the ones to tell you how to think about what can unfold in front of you. Third, you want someone who's achieved his or her success in the right way. That they've done things such that you go, yes, that was done with character, with integrity. It has made all of us better in some way. We've improved lives as a consequence of this leadership. The last thing is, honestly, we typically like to find people who, because those, the people who fill those three buckets are fairly rare and, and difficult to entice to come to Duke, and so we look for people who have some fondness for Duke. And, uh, and that makes them more willing to, to, to take out time from their lives. So let me start with that last issue. So Kevin is not really inspired to be here in Cameron Indoor Stadium. Uh, he is not a big Duke fan. He is a very, very loyal Maryland graduate, football player at Maryland. Yes, we have some Maryland people here. Uh, and I'll say a little bit more about this, but, uh, but he has built this amazing company called Under Armour, and Duke is a Nike school. The, I mean, the, the licensing wars are such that Under Armour is really not welcome. I, I, I'm surprised that his shoes made it through the security check. <laughs> so I've been pursuing Kevin for a number of years to try to get him to overcome some of these issues. And the reason why I felt it was so important to bring Kevin here is that he is someone of amazing accomplishment. And I never thought that I'd introduce someone who, who started an incredible career on the basis of dealing with the unpleasantness of a sweaty t-shirt, but that is Kevin's story. Uh, and so he is the very rare individual who started something, I think, 
literally in, was it in your grandmother's basement? Start a company in his grandmother's basement. And as founder, usually things don't go well at a certain point and you have to bring in other management. And so to be able to not just found something, to be that entrepreneur, but to grow that into a major company, which now has over $5 billion in revenues and 14,000 employees, is really, truly a remarkable accomplishment. So that's, that's there. I mean, he's, he's accomplished something that is, is wonderful to behold. Uh, he's also incredibly wise, and this is when I started to, to pursue Kevin, is when I heard him speak uh, at another event, and I thought, wow, he really understands the obligation of a business leader in the world today, and understands that it's not just about making profit, that you do have a responsibility to make profit if you're in a public company, but at the same time, you have a responsibility to society, which leads me to the insight around, does he do things the right way? And what's impressed me so much about Kevin is his commitment to his customers, to his employees, and to his community. What he's done in Baltimore is, is truly extraordinary to see the investment that he has made in a community that so much needs that kind of investment, that support, in order to bring out the best of what could happen in Baltimore. And so Kevin exemplifies the, the, the notion that we often talk about, which is global leadership starts at home. So for him, it starts at home in Baltimore, but he is running a global a global enterprise, and so he's successful at both levels. The last thing I'm going to mention, because I really want Kevin to be the one who's talking here, is that you may have noticed that as with many CEOs, Kevin has been caught up in some of the cross currents in terms of the, the intersection between events in society and the world of politics. And what impresses me about Kevin is, first of all, he has been hit from both sides of the political divide in this country by positions that he's taken, which means he must be doing something right, that, that if you can have everybody get mad at you, then, then, then truly you're, you're trying to create a path that is inclusive. And this is the, the final point I would make, which is the way that Kevin makes those decisions is he looks deep inside and deep within the company to say, what are the values that cause me to make the choices that I make as we deal with a society that is deeply divided in such a way that we have some hope for bringing people together? Without further ado, Kevin, please come to the podium. Thank you very much, Dean Bolding. We covered a lot. To the dean, to the faculty, to the program staff, honored guests, student speakers, Everett, Natasha, James, you did a wonderful job. To all the friends, the families, the spouses, especially in this case, the cousins, the brothers, the sisters, the dads, with a special thanks to all the moms who will be properly honored tomorrow. It certainly takes a village to get to this moment, as you all know. And especially to you, the Fuqua Executive MBA graduates, class of 2017, I want to begin by saying thank you. I am incredibly honored to be here with you today, and as Dean Bolden mentioned, especially as a Maryland graduate. Those of you who don't or are not familiar with the rivalry that existed at one time, it was never quite exactly UNC, but it was what I would call acute. <laughs> Don't tell Gary Williams that I'm here, please. To you graduates, Team Fuqua, well, you now have that shiny new NBA, which is an amazing accomplishment, and you should be very proud. And on behalf of all of us, we salute you. We salute you. We congratulate you. We celebrate you today. Your official days as a student may be over, but I promise you that the learning 
is just beginning. And a lot of what you did here at Fuqua is learn how to learn, and I believe that may just be the most important skill that you can have in life. Continue to learn the rest of your life, learn from your families and your friends, your communities, your experiences, and of course, your careers. But just as important is how you learn and what you take away from each of those lessons, because life is going to dole out some lessons whether you're ready for them or not. And I speak here from experience. And it is that experience that I'd like to share with you today. And for the record, I do not have all the answers. I too am still learning. Oh man, am I still learning. But I do have a pretty good story so far. And that story, along with a few hard-earned lessons, is what I want to share with you today. So I'll begin by telling you about the company that I started 22 years ago and still lead today, Under Armour. Our company exists because of three very basic but essential things. Entrepreneurship, defiant belief, and passion. Passion. Under Armour started with a simple idea. I was a football player at the University of Maryland, and I never liked the way that my cotton t-shirt felt. We practiced and played games. We all wore a standard issue gray cotton t-shirt under our pads. And I noticed that as I sweated, the shirt became wet, it got heavy. And after practice one day, I actually put a sopping wet t-shirt on a scale and it weighed three pounds. And I thought to myself, how has no one ever addressed this issue? So me, I was never the star of the team, the biggest or the fastest, and I was always looking for a way to grab or find an edge some way to improve to get more playing time. And I realized that carrying around that extra weight from those cotton t-shirts was slowing me down. It was slowing my teammates down. It was slowing nearly every athlete in the world down. So I started to think about a solution. What could I do? In my dorm room, I came up with an idea for a totally different kind of a t-shirt, one that was synthetic, stretchy, light, tight, resistant to sweat. I had a prototype made and soaked it in water, put it on a scale, and it weighed seven ounces. I thought to myself, this might be something. So I had the idea, and this is where entrepreneurship comes into play. You see, today's workplace is filled with those generic, cliched, and basically meaningless buzzwords. I'm sure you've been inundated with them here at Fuqua. Game changer, paradigm shift, core competency, serial, fill in the blank, how about unpack? I'm not going to use that today. And one of the worst is disruptive. And I'll fully own that I've used some of these myself. But forget the cliches and get back to the original word, entrepreneur. A word which literally means bearer of risk. It describes a person who has an idea and is ready and willing to act on it. I decided to bear the risk. I started a company around a new t-shirt. I knew that the shirt was better than anything that was out there in the marketplace. I knew that it would make athletes better. I was smart enough to be naive enough, stay with me, to not know what I could not accomplish. That naivete served me well, and it will serve you well also. Why not me? Why not us? We should all ask that question of ourselves. And so I had no experience in the sporting goods world. Of course, I only had a tiny bit of money, and there were certainly no banks or investors lining up to give me theirs. And I know you all have heard of something called the friends and family round of raising capital. Spoiler alert, don't be surprised when no one shows up for that one. That's mostly true for me. But I certainly did have a lot of help, including my family. You see, I was the youngest of five boys. My mom was a working woman serving as the mayor of our hometown. My dad was a land developer who actually died too soon when I was just 20 years old. So I had no mentor. I had no real business plan to work with. There was no roadmap. I learned it all as I went along. I learned it as I went along. And let me pause here for a moment to underscore how important entrepreneurship is for businesses for our nation, for the world, and for you personally. One of the most important things you can do now at the start of this newest, greatest chapter in your life 
is to see yourself as an entrepreneur. Because, well, you are. We all are. We all have ideas. We are all the authors of our own stories. We can all make ourselves better. We can all make those around us better. We all bear risk. Entrepreneurship is infused in everything we do, not just in our business and jobs, but in our everyday lives. As the students here know, the namesake of this school, J.B. Fuqua, was an entrepreneur. As a teenager, to the guests and families, he educated himself by requesting books from the Duke University Library to be mailed to his farm. He actually credited Duke's lending program with enabling him to learn about business techniques and ultimately underwrite this school. How cool is that? That's being an entrepreneur. That's what each and every one of you has the opportunity to do. And you all had to be entrepreneurial to get into Fuqua, and then, of course, to get through it. And as I downloaded with Jason LaRose, who runs North America for Under Armour and a Fuqua graduate, I said, tell me some things about it. He said, well, one of the things I could say is that, you know, we learned to pronounce it by the understanding of few qualify in order to get in here and how special that is. And I said, it sounds like you, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> Entrepreneurship is all around us, and that's the duty of all of us to encourage it and support it. One of my favorite examples of that encouragement and support are lemonade stands that kids set up in the summertime. Everybody knows the lemonade stand. I'm going to give you a golden rule walking out of here today, and one thing I ask of you for the rest of your days. Whenever you see a lemonade stand, whenever you drive by one on your bike in a car, do yourself a favor. Drop everything and proceed directly to it. Buy tons of lemonade. This is entrepreneurship at its best, and it should be encouraged, and it should be celebrated. Help those kids understand what they're doing. Tell them about what they're doing, why they're doing it. Ask them and support them. And as I explained to my own children, my 11 or 14-year-old, especially when they were younger, when they put up their lemonade stands, the $14 they grossed is not actual profit when I'm actually the one supplying the cups, the lemonade, and the ice. You ever heard of drayage, shipping, or manufacturing costs before, let alone taxes, because Uncle Sam gets a cut too? My point is that there's a good lesson here. Encourage them. After all, they're just like you. They're entrepreneurs. And it's not always easy to bear the risk. Under Armour's first office was in a moldy basement of my grandmother's row house in Georgetown. A small group of us used to work around the clock in those early days, taking orders over the phone, stitching shirts, packing and shipping boxes. I maxed out six credit cards while desperately searching for more funding to start my company. In our first two years, I drove an old Ford Explorer more than 100,000 miles back and forth across the United States. That's four times around the earth trying to convince people to buy our shirts, to try our product. And we survived those early days because of the second thing that I mentioned earlier. We did so because of defiant belief. What is defiant belief? It's the belief in a wildly ambitious goal and in one's ability it's the belief that things can be changed or made better. This defiant belief fueled our growth. Early days turned into heady days. We began to grow at a dizzying rate. We entered into contracts with sports teams and universities. We expanded our product line, moving into women's apparel and eventually footwear. We hit the $100 million mark and then the billion dollar mark, the $2 billion mark, and today over $5 billion. We signed athletes like Tom Brady, Lindsey Vaughn, Jordan Spieth, Misty Copeland, Cam Newton, and Stephen Curry. Our 2005 IPO was the most successful one Wall Street had seen in five years. And from 2010 to 2016, we'd had 26 straight quarters of 20 plus percent top line revenue growth. Even just a few years ago in 2015, we grew 28%. That's nearly a billion dollars in a single year. We had the four MVPs in the country's four biggest sports under endorsement contract. And our 21-year-old golfer, Jordan Spieth, won the Masters and the U.S. Open. On the cover of magazines, invited to the heavy hitter conferences, a Wall Street darling for sure. And being on top of the world, 
We were grinding so hard, trying to reach the next milestone, that at times you look back and say, did we take enough pause to give ourselves time for that breath, to reflect and to really learn? And then it happened. Our growth streak of 20% ended, compounded by a number of factors, including macro retail challenges in North America, our largest market, shifting consumer preferences and inefficiency stemming from the years of rapid growth that we felt. This is what happens in business. This is the real world. And there is no playbook, let alone a script of what to do. And this is where the real learning begins. The credit, as Tony Roosevelt once said, belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, who spends themselves in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if they fail, at least fails while daring greatly, so that their place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Bear of risk. Defiant belief, that's what keeps the fighter in the ring, the gladiator in the arena, the team on the field. As a gladiator in ancient Rome, the arena was a wonderful place when you're winning, when you're adored by the crowd. But get maimed, take a fall, or worse, and the crowd would turn on you in the blink of an eye. Defiant belief allows us to challenge the doubters and the system and sustain us during our lows and the lulls. We've seen this time and time again with our Under Armour athletes. Jordan Spieth winning that 2015 Masters in record-breaking fashion. But the next year, he was actually leading the tournament on the back nine of the final day by five strokes. And then he dunked the ball in the water twice on number 12. He ended up finishing second that day. And Jordan tells me that more people want to talk to him about his second place finish than his historic victory from the year before. Haters gonna hate. Lindsey Vaughn is perhaps the greatest ski racer, male or female, of all time. She was cheered for her 82 World Cup wins and her Olympic medals, and she was jeered for her falls and injuries in her pursuit. She missed the 2014 Olympics, and the critics pronounced her done. Yet she stayed in the arena, fueled by those critics and the naysayers, and it paid off with another Olympic medal just this past spring in South Korea. Coming out of high school, this may be a sore subject here, Stephen Curry wasn't even recruited by his father's alma mater, let alone Duke, although you did get his brother. So he went to Davidson, a tiny school without much of a basketball tradition. He took them to the Elite Eight. Coming out of college, there were somehow still plenty of doubters who thought he was too fragile or small to play in the NBA. Today, Stefan has two NBA championships and two NBA MVPs, one of which was unanimous selection, the first time that has ever happened in league history. This year, he was slowed down by a knee injury that held him out for more than 11 weeks. And through relentless hard work and faith, Stefan has proved all the doubters wrong, as he said many times through his journey. Be the best version of yourself in anything you do. You don't have to live by anybody else's story. Defiant belief where obstacles and naysayers are the fuel, where some retreat, those with defiant belief go even harder. Well, 2017 for Under Armour was a year that we hit the ball in the water twice. We fell in the downhill and we injured our knee. Our company took a hit, and as chairman and CEO, I took a hit. So what did we do? We stayed in the arena, and we are in the arena as we continue swinging. You see, we have defiant belief. It defines us. It is our brand. It's our team and our athletes. We remain ever humble and always hungry and understanding that the number one lesson is about the power of perseverance. When you get knocked down, your ability to fight on. The easiest thing to do sometimes is to walk away, to exit the arena, and you'll feel that, and you'll want to go. It'll define you what you do. We've been in business for 22 years. We've been a public company for 13 of those years. And in that time, we've gone through some pretty wild swings. We've been heralded and we've been panned. Welcome to the arena. You can stand on the sideline 
or you can be one of the gladiators and pick up arms. In 2017, we took a much needed breath and reflected. We learned and we leaned in and we embraced the opportunity. Learning. One of the best pieces of advice that I actually got over this time was from one of the world's most iconic and greatest entrepreneurs who embraces this notion of continuous learning. It was in that event I actually got a chance to spend time with Jeff Bezos, and I'd asked him the question from someone who'd been on the cover and the person of the year of Time Magazine in 1999, how do you handle all the criticism, all that time with people throwing, shooting arrows? His answer surprised me. It was really short and simple and brilliant. He simply said, when I hear criticism, the first thing that I do is ask myself if they're right. If I should listen, if I'm not constantly just fighting back, but really internalize it. That's a really important question. Whether the answer is a yes or a no, there are lots of no's, but there's always truth that we have to be and find the humility to understand. And the most important thing is what you learn and how you learn by asking that question in the first place. Are they right? The parents, the coaches, the bosses, or even the critics, are they right? Understand that. Think about that for yourselves. What rough chapters in your life do is strip everything down and they expose your defiant belief. Do the critics, the naysayers, and the obstacles stop you, or do they fuel you? Are you willing to learn the hard lessons? Under Armour is in the arena, and we have the scars to prove it. But we're standing. We learn and adapt. We fight. We believe. We are one team, and our culture is king. We continue to find inspiration in the things that got us started, and that is our passion. Passion is not an emotion, it's not a hashtag, it's a true feeling, it's something that fuels us every single day. Passion for each other as teammates, passion for our work and the products that we make, passion for our consumers, our customers, for making people better, for making little boys and little girls stand up and say when they put it on that they feel they can do anything. Passion is what turned that original idea into a challenger, and that challenger became one of the biggest, baddest brands in the world. But we're certainly still learning. Entrepreneurship, defiant belief, and passion must be earned every single day. These should always remain works in progress every single day. We put one foot in front of the other every single day. We look for the new solutions to old problems. We generate ideas and we act on them. We bear the risk, entrepreneurs. We create products that make you better. We make the communities that we live in better, standing tall for fairness and inclusivity. This is our purpose. And I've always looked at Under Armour as a book. Well, we've now written the first few chapters. And great books are like great stories, and great stories have beginnings, middles, and ends, and understanding where we are. Our job is to manage that story. And I've got to admit, our story has been one part comedy, a little bit of tragedy, and some really good drama. But there's certainly many more chapters to write. And today, you begin writing the next chapters of your own books, of your own stories. You are the leading edge of this next generation, one that's poised to be a great one. You are exceedingly demanding of the world. You expect it to be fair and efficient. You expect it to be more connected, more equitable, and more inclusive. You expect progress. You expect the world to become a better place. These high expectations are a big part of what makes you great. But you also have skin in this game. With those expectations come real responsibilities. In order to make the world more fair, more efficient, more connected, more equitable and more inclusive, to make it a better place, you individually and collectively bear the responsibility and the risk of making it better. In order to demand greatness, you must produce it. 
You must hold yourself to the same standard that you seek. That greatness expands beyond your given livelihood, no matter what you do. If you work for a Fortune 500 corporation or start your own business, it must be done with a higher purpose, with wildly ambitious goals in mind. The belief that things can be changed or made better. Why not you? Why not you right now? Why not you in this next chapter? Because our nation, our world, really, is starved for that strong, positive leadership. And now it's your opportunity. They will be looking at you. They will call on you to lead with entrepreneurship, with a defiant belief, and with passion. They will call on you to be the innovators, the makers and the job creators. They will look to you to call out discrimination, to speak out about climate change, racism and sexism. They will look to you to call out for civility, love, compassion and respect. They will look to you to give back. They will look to you to persevere. You are here right now, at this very moment, you are entering the arena. You're entering the arena. You're no longer the leaders of tomorrow. You are, in fact, the leaders of today. This is the challenge. And more simply, this is your single greatest opportunity in your lives. Seize it. Grab it. Attack it. Carpe diem. And one last thing. This summer and the summers that follow, Seek out and stop by those lemonade stands. Tell them about bearing risk. Help them with their decisions. Keep yourselves humble. Keep yourselves hungry. Always continue to learn. And after all, those kids you'll be talking to one day will be sharing this arena with you. Thank you. Good luck to each of you. And three words I never thought I would say, go Blue Devils. Thank you very much. Kevin, thank you. Thank you so much for your inspirational words. Thank you for sharing your passion, your purpose, and thank you for demonstrating to all of our soon-to-be graduates what it means to earn our highest honorific, which is to be a leader of consequence. Thank you for being the leader of consequence that you are. And so I'd like to give you a small gift of appreciation on behalf of the entire community. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Fuqua Scholars from the cross continent Class of 2017, Weekend Executive Class of 2017, and the Global Executive Class of 2017. Throughout the course of the program, each of these students worked hard in a very challenging academic environment. The successful completion of the MBA is an outstanding accomplishment. Each member of this class has balanced this program with a full-time position and a personal and family life. Today, we want to honor those who have not only completed the cross-continent weekend executive and the global executive MBA programs, but have distinguished themselves in their academic program. Fuqua scholars are those students who graduate in the top 10% of their class. As we consider the quality of all of the members of this class, we can also reflect on the outstanding achievement of being designated a Fuqua scholar. I will read the names of the Fuqua scholars alphabetically, and I would ask that as I read each name, the, the person stand in his or her place. I would also ask the audience to wait until I have read all the names before indicating their support and congratulations. That way, it will help ensure that all the names can be heard. The cross-continent MBA class of 2017 Fuqua scholars are Gabriel David Haley, Jason Kang, 
Carl Anthony Kensiki, Elizabeth Epler Quito, Duo Lee, Megan Kempen Paliara, James Schulz, Callum Craig Thomas, Daniel Walker, Thomas James William Rayner, and Kate Eugenia Zabinski. Please join me in congratulating the Fuqua Scholars of Craft Funding Program. You may be seated. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce the weekend executive MBA class of 2017 Fuqua scholars. They are Afsa Ahmed, Arvindan Balasubramanian, Segaline Baling, John Jacob Bungard V, Christopher James Gilligan, Adam Knepp, Devon Leclerc, Nicholas Peterfi, Perry Green Tarvasakono, Pratesh Harihar Rao Vargantwar, and Brian John Weatherford. Please join me in congratulating Super Scholar. Next, I would like to introduce the Global Executive MBA Class of 2017 Fuqua Scholars. They are Janet Walsh Burpee, Mark Richard Caverly, Kuram Mateen Khan, Philip Rees Thomas, and Diana Barrett Wiseman. Please join me in congratulating the Global Executive Fuqua Scholars. Now it is time to individually recognize each of our graduates. We ask each of our graduates to come forward to be recognized and congratulated by Dean Bolding, Kevin Plank, myself, and the entire assembly gathered here today. At this time, I would like to ask Sydney Jones, Assistant Director and Program Manager for the Cross Continent Class of 2017, to come forward to read the names of the Cross Continent 2017 graduates. We ask the graduates to file up on the stage on your right, and as your name is called, please accept your scroll and our congratulations. A moment ago, I asked that you please refrain from showing your support for the Fuqua scholars until all names were read. I want to point out that this part of the ceremony is quite different. This is a very special moment and I encourage you all to cheer for our graduates and show your joy and support. Everett Paul Losey. Kate Eugenia Zabinski. Arshin Alam. Fatima Tolupe Oregbe. Mayreen Anjum Azar. Justine Janae Bailey. <laughs> Melissa Jean Bernal. <laughs> Corey R. Black. <laughs> Molly Caroline Brannock. Christina Carballo Aldonondo. <laughs> J. 
Julia Nicole Chapman. Kevin Hansen Clark. Sarah Borden Cornwall. Joseph Albert DeRusso IV. Jiayu Effie Du. Vishnu Sarma Dodasi. Pedro Echevarria Restrepo. Alexandra Eliseva. Michael William Ellerhorst. Lily M. Arod. Christina Fazano. Andre L. R. Filomeno. Nathaniel Fisher Gaburek. Michael Aaron Gold. Gabriel David Haley. Wenlei Cynthia Hong. Nicholas Harmon Hansen. Daniel Head. Kevin L. Henderson. David Hua. Adrian Arlene Huckabee. Michael Growney Kane. Carl Anthony Kinsicki. Elizabeth Epler Quito. Jenna Marie Kunkel. Robert Frank Landsberg. Roger David Lehman. Duo Don Lee. Jing Ling. Mitchell Braden Lyncher. May Mark. Gregory Michael Marsh. Eric Joseph McAleer. Benjamin Connor McGovern. Dale Kedrick Meredith II. April L. Morley. Kimberly K. Hyatt Nels. Andrew Ness. Pauline Noir. Pius Ajiboye Ogondiran. Chinwuba Uchena Okonkwo. David Oluwagbe Miga Okuwobi. Luis Fernando Oria Probert. Megan Kempen Pagliara. Matthew Orr Pinnebaker. Brandon Scott Peters. Diane Pham. David Watkins Point. 
Neil Matthew Prunier. Prashant Ravi. Sarah Blake Roeder. Betty Renee Royster. James J. Schulz. Kevin Michael Scott. Baha A. B. Sirig. Gaurav Sharma. Gregory Patrick Simpson. Ashwini Singh. Tarek Nicola Solomon. James Lawrence Sturm III. Callum Craig Thomas. Lisa Catherine Townsend. Christina Esther Valerio. Henry Charles Van Dusseip. Alejandro Villafane Gorza. Gregory Frederick Walls. Christina Warner. James Hobart Watson, Jr. Thomas James William Wainer. Na Cynthia Yu. Changlong Zhu. All right. At this time, I would like to ask Meg DeLuca, Program Manager for the Weekend Executive Class of 2017, to come forward to read the names of the graduates. I guess they are all lined up, so I don't need to give them any more things. So congratulations. I have to say, congratulations to the Cross Continent Class of 2017. <laughs> Natasha Regina Chavis. Marco Antonio Marquez Gomez. Brian John Witherford. Asa Ahmed. Irfan Atlas. Rakesh Vidar Aranguni. Ari Vintan Balasubramanian. <laughs> Kathleen Marie Baldwin. <laughs> Anthony John Bell III. Aaron Michael Black. <laughs> Daniel Joseph Brooks. John Jacob Bungert V. Rachel D. Burnside. Brittany Elise Calloway. Andre Cargelioso Scoff. Scott Ryan Carson. Richard Denny Katakora Pinaranda. <laughs> Justin Chavis. <laughs> Braden Robert Colby. <laughs> 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 
Zakin Zanik Crooks. <laughs> Duen Kanti Da. Vincent Anthony Dilsid. Christopher Nicholas Dari. <laughs> William Cody Fornis. <laughs> Lauren Fox. <laughs> Joseph A. Gatt. <laughs> Manish Ghosh. Christopher James Gilligan. Darini Gowenzin-Rondrum. Lindsay White Greyhouse. Jaris Kinred Green. Miles Gray Grooms. Anthony Lee Horlick. Brian Lee Jones. Joseph Brock Cannon. Brittany A. Keith. Najia Hamid Kavir. Adam C. Neff. Sripal Koya. Vish Krishnan. Sabran Kumar. Jarrett Ramos Lewis. William Ashton Lewis, Jr. Craven Elkins Lau. Gia Ma. Max A. Mayo. Brandon and Lucy. Ashish Matal. Mark Wayne Morgan. Claire Louise Murray. Ram Kumar Muragaya. Sergey Mizek. Lisette Go Penleth. <laughs> Jennifer K. Nutsi James. <laughs> Samuel Vitali Omlianzik. <laughs> Christina M. O'Neill. <laughs> Kalian C. Paladugu. Shanik Kurvav Patel. <laughs> Jessica U. Perry. Sandeep Purumburi Pumaduri. <laughs> Nick Peterfee. Ron Prabhala. <laughs> Ravi Chandra Raghamampeta. <laughs> okay. Adarsh Babu. <laughs> 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 
Vikitesh Kumar Valor Ravamurthy. Christopher Ryan Reed. Craig Allen Robinson. Alexi Roguzin. Rebecca Ruth Schaefer. Sumit Sinha. Mahesh Sivakumar. Ashley Marie Smith. Chanel Keith Southwell. Prithvi Srinivasan. Jessica Lee Steinberg. Shalini Tupron. John Horton Tyson. Prithesh Hariharo Bangawar. Vikram Namdeo Vichar. Matthew J. Wampler. Jennifer Morton Ward. Nicholas Peter Zant. And Jose Miguel Zapatero. Congratulations to the Weekend Executive Class of 2017. At this time, I would like to ask Mary Gray Jacobson, former Assistant Director and Program Manager for the Global Executive Class of 2017 to come forward to read the names of the graduates. Peter Dongan Sun. Trentus Agnew. Sandeep Akapati. Olurutimi Ayola Ali Kiha. Jennifer Annette Alexson. <laughs> Janet Walsh Burphy. <laughs> Scott Paul Catran. Mark Richard Caverly. Mark Ladson Childers. Gregory Stewart Claffey. Sudhir Raghunath Deshpande. Ricardo L. DeSoto. Julie Christina Fargnoli. <laughs> Suzanne Bacos Giro. <laughs> Vidig Graf Grote. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew Edward Groom. Ernesto Heller. George Wong.
Loretta Lynn Aram Katsuriku. Kuram Mateen Khan. Mark Francis Montoro. Michael J. Palumbo. Yulia Senchenko. Sean C. Sexton. Vishal Shukla. Michael Duncan Simpson. Felipe Jose Teixeira. Philip Reese Thomas. Abba Triohan. Quinny Xiang. Sumanth Ulanki. Congratulations to the Global Executive Class of 2017. Okay, now, now that everyone's sitting down, could I ask all the students to please rise? Please join me in congratulating the 2017 Weekend Cross Continent and Global MBA graduates. So I'm going, to, I'm going to ask the students to remain standing for just a bit because I, I have a few words that I'd like to share with them. Uh, for everyone else, just uh, in terms of protocol, if you can remain seated until all of us process out of the building, um, and then we will join you for celebration in the Fox Center, and so the celebration will continue. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who's joined us today to make this day so very special. And I'd like to thank the faculty and staff who, who helped bring us to this day. Special thanks to Kevin Plank for giving such a terrific commencement address. And Kevin did mention that Under Armour is hiring. Uh, so a few words to all of you before we, we wrap things up. And the, the first thing is that I want to thank you all. If you think about your lives, if you engage in the thought experiment of who you were, what you were doing, what you were capable of, what you were confident of, and you compare where you were before you began the program and where you are today, my hope is that you conclude your lives have definitely changed, and even better, changed for the better in terms of what you're now capable of as you begin the next phase of your journey. What I can say is the following, which is all of you chose a path full of risk, full of change, full of excitement, full of fun, hopefully on occasion, full of stress, anxiety, tension. And you probably thought with all of that going on that maybe there would be a rock of stability within the business school. And then you discovered that we too were changing. 
And here's the thing, as we changed, part of why we've changed and why we've changed for the better is because of you. And I can't thank you enough for how you've changed our lives for the better and the impact that you've had on our community. Whenever we reach this time of year, students like to ask me, you know, what, what makes us stand out? What makes us different from other classes? And, and I used to try to respond to that question, but over time I figured out that really what they were asking was, are we the best class ever and are we your favorites? And my answer to all of you is absolutely, you are the best classes ever. You are my favorites. So thank you for making that possible. Now, what I will say is you should all hope, given your willingness to invest in this community, that next year I say the same thing. Because it's in your best interest if every year we get better and better and better. But I do thank you for the impact that you've had on us. It's, it's a, a day of great celebration, and for us, definitely mixed feelings as we see you move on to the next stage of your journey. And so as you move on to that next stage, I have four requests to, to make of you. And no, I'm not going to ask you for money. Uh, there will be plenty of opportunities in the future for that. The first request is the following which is, this is your day. This celebration is all about you, and deservedly so. Each one of you has done incredible things culminating in this celebration today. But having said that, please don't forget that other people made it possible for you to reach this day of celebration. Please take the time to show your appreciation for all those individuals, either here or not here, who made this day possible. It's so important that you thank the people who open up opportunities in your lives. So please don't get so wrapped up in your celebration that you forget how important that is. The second thing is that we, we truly hope you stay connected to us. This is not a, a transaction. This is a lifetime membership. This is only the beginning of your association with the Duke community. And we hope that you continue to invest in that community, that you continue to support that community, and think about the people who will follow behind you, and think about the ways that you can support others in this community. And so we really hope you stay connected to us because our alumni community, as you now know, is so critically important in everything we do for the current students. So to embrace that role. Now, some of you may find it challenging to, to make it back to campus uh, as you head off to different parts of the world. And here I'll simply say, you never know when our paths will cross. And I don't mean that in a threatening way. Uh, but the reality is that, that we all travel a lot in airports, and so we may see each other anywhere in the world at any given moment in time, as recently happened to me when I was in, in Heathrow, and I saw someone walking through the airport, and I thought, I know that person. That's a, that's a Fuqua student. And so I, I jumped in front of this student, and, and if I can give you kind of lifelong advice, in airports, don't jump in front of people. It makes them very nervous. Um, so I jumped in front of this person, and I said, hey, don't I know you? And, and this person looks at me, and it's pretty clear he has no idea who I am. Um, and, and I say, you know, didn't, didn't you go to Fuqua? And, and he relaxes a little bit and says, yeah, I did. And I said, yeah, I, I remember you. You, uh, you went to... Uh, Fuqua, you graduated in 1987, right? And, and he's looking at me, he's saying, yeah, that's right. I said, uh, yeah, your name is, is, uh, is Jack, Jack Michaels. And he says, yeah, that's amazing that, that, that you remember. I said, yeah, of course I remember you from, uh, from my marketing class. I remember that, that you sat, in fact, I remember you sat in the top row 
in this, you know, the, the, the corner seat on the end. And so Jack is looking at me like, what kind of freak are you? <laughs> and so he's very smooth, though, and he goes, you know, yeah, and so I said, yeah, I, I'm Bill Bolding. And so to kind of get that out of the way. And he goes, oh, yeah, Bill, of course I remember you. Uh, but I have to tell you, you, you are amazing because I have no idea where you sat. <laughs> so maybe some of us are less memorable than we hoped, but my hope is that we will all stay connected. I, I really passionately hope for that. The, the third thing is, and you're gonna, as soon as I say this, you're gonna say, that is so obvious, of course we're going to do this. The request is to stay connected to each other. And, and you're gonna go, well, why wouldn't we stay connected to each other? These people have been so important to my life. We've developed these incredible bonds. We've been, we've been through unbelievable experiences together, the highs, the lows, and this is a lifelong bond. But I have news for you. Life happens. And when life happens, you're going to get caught up in so many new things, in so many new networks, so many new activities. And it will be easy for you simply to let the relationships that you've developed with each other to slide. And my point is very simple. Don't assume those relationships will just maintain themselves. Put in the work. Put in the work because it will take real effort as your life continues to change to maintain those bonds. But they should be lifelong bonds in terms of what you can do for one another over a very long period of time. The last request is really to live up to the standards that that Kevin talked about in his speech, which is we want you to go out and live lives of success, but we also want you to live lives of significance. So success and significance. And what that really means, to be significant, means you're going to make a difference in the lives of others. And when I first talked to you and welcomed you, I told you about a hallmark of Fuqua is the idea of being happy, but being happy really means making full use of your talents along the lines of excellence to bring out the best from one another. And so our last request is simple. Go out there, make a difference in the lives of others, lead a life of success, significance, and happiness. Be consequential. Thank you very much. So with that, we really are finished and we will begin to walk out.